man, how could God let this happen? Um, but, you know, we have a, a whole book that tells us to trust it and then a whole book of God's faithfulness in it. And so um, that definitely, you know, throughout the years has not necessarily gotten easier, but that's what you turn to immediately is those, you know, faithfulness, even when it's hard to. What's up, buddy? It's your boy, Stephen Blake. Welcome back to the podcast episode seven now. We are here with a superstar athlete. She is an entrepreneur, graphic designer. She's a jack of all trades, master of it all. Please help me welcome Courtney for now. Did I say that right? For new. For new. So that's okay. how people say it. But gotcha. For new. Yes. Very cool. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. A little, you know, running around a little bit, but I'm yeah. good. I'm ready. Yeah. So before we begin, let me tell, ask you a little bit about your story, your background, kind of like who you are, where you're from, for folks who don't know you, myself included. So yeah, go for yeah. it. Um, so I'm from Chandler, Arizona, born and raised. Um, let's see, I uh, went to Perry High School back in the day, and now I'm at the University of New Mexico um, playing soccer and studying architecture. Um, I know we'll get into it a little bit with childhood, but I grew up um, going to church. Um, but man, God has done amazing things, especially the past few years. It's been like exponential growth. Um, can't even like fathom it. Um, but yeah, I uh, obviously love soccer, um, love calligraphy, and that's so we'll get into that as well. Um, but uh, love the sun, love Arizona. Um, yeah, that's. Good intro a little bit. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so let's dig, dig a little bit deeper into all these different aspects. I know we can go so many different directions here. Yes. How yes. about a little more about like your upbringing with religion and faith and all that? Tell me about, more about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like I said, grew up in the church. Um, there's not a time I can remember that I didn't know God, didn't know, you know, of Jesus. Um, and um, so my, you know, getting right into it, um, I was saved when I was 12 at a summer camp. And so that was, you know, obviously I knew the story of Jesus had been told it my entire life, but that was where like Jesus met me. And that was like the first time that I truly, um, you know, knew him and accepted him as savior. Um, and then, you know, from that, uh, point forward, um, you know, my life was, I would say I, I idled soccer for a little bit. And so that was, um, you know, a hard, you know, tension. Um, but God obviously used that, you know, and he used some tragedy stuff like injuries um, in the sport um, to draw me closer to him. And, and going into college, um, you know, that idol had been, you know, depleted because, you know, God gives and takes away. Um, and through the taking away, uh, I knew that soccer no longer was, you know, something that I could you know, always hold on to that God alone is the only one um, that I can. But then college hits and man, like so much growth happens again. Um, and I mean, a pivotal moment for me was um, I went to the Passion Conference in Fort Worth, Texas um, in 2023, the uh, tail end of 2022. Um, and that was the moment for me that was like, you know, Jesus became, you know, he was my savior always, but that's when he became my Lord. And it was like my life, you know, like it can't be compartmentalized anymore. Like every facet of my life is for Jesus and living for him. Um, and so I think we'll get more into that. But overall, my upbringing, bringing, um, you know, my parents, you, you know, were Christian as well, but they have their own faith journey as well. And they have grown tremendously over the past few years. Um so I remember even like in like third grade, like in the Sunday school classes, um, you know, I wasn't very biblically smart. I didn't really read my Bible until the past few years. And so, again, I knew the logistics or I knew the, you know, truths of the gospel, of what Jesus did. But, you know, I wasn't like soaked in scripture. And, um, you know, my parents even said that that moment for them when they saw me in class, like not knowing the answers for them was like, oh, we need to probably dive in to scripture. We need to lead her in scripture. Um, and so that's a little bit of, of their story as well. Um, but I mean, overall my, you know, I'm privileged to have the childhood I did, you know, parents who stayed together, you know, brought me to church. I mean, the love and care they had for me is like unreal. So, I mean, again, I feel privileged to have the childhood I did, but 
Yeah. That's very cool. I mean, yeah. obviously, you're very lucky, I said, and fortunate to grow up in a core nuclear family, right? To have your parents still together, to be able to grow up in a Christian home, right? You know, some folks don't have that. For you in particular, though, what was that kind of turning point in where you kind of, I guess, individualized yourself from your parents' faith, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, again, I would say that was probably, uh, you know, in sixth grade when I actually um, professed, uh, professed faith in Jesus um, at the summer camp. Um, and again, I think that was, you know, I, I was, I just feel like I was very like young, you know, like growing, you know, kind of a late bloomer. And so, I mean, I was very like dependent on my parents and I mean, I know most kids are, but I, I almost didn't want to be independent. Like I wanted to never grow up, um, because I, you know, just loved being under my parents' wings. Um, but I'd say that summer camp, you know, it was my first time kind of traveling alone. Um, you know, my first time, you know, like sleeping you know, by myself, you know, in this uh, place was just, you know, in San Diego, but first time being away. Um, and so it really was kind of like a vulnerable moment. Um, and then the camp high there, just you're in this beautiful place, you know, you're hit with, you know, worship sessions, you know, messages, you know, just constant, like again, biblical truth, um, and, and worship that's just like insane. And so like that for me was, just, I felt the Holy Spirit. Like I felt Jesus's presence in that room. And it was like, no, this is not just something my parents told me to do. Like he's after me, my heart, you know, and I want it too, right? It wasn't just, uh, you know, my parents saying, oh, we're going to the 10 a.m. service, you know, get up. This was like, no, th I want this for my life. And so, yeah, that's kind of when it changed wow. there. So Quite an interesting story, summer camp and all. So follow up question to that would be talk about how I'm sure you went through high school and now college now, those points of, you know, of course you were riding that spiritual high. Mm -hmm. How did you keep that kind of wave going, you know, especially going into high school because you might be the minority or in college as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, I will say there, the, what I mentioned about compartmentalizing, that was still kind of the case even after, um, you know, I accepted Jesus at that young age. Um, and I mean, we all know how tough high school can be, even junior high. Um, but definitely high school for me, um, and COVID time actually was, it was a kind of a tough season, um, in terms of, you know, kind of got into that party scene a little bit and, you know, nothing too crazy, but, you know, as I sit here now, I'm like, that stuff is, you know, there's no life in it. It doesn't give life. Um, again, only Jesus can. And so, um, that stuff actually taught me that what I just said though, you know, going through those seasons, you know, obviously if I went back, I wouldn't want to just because, you know, it's stupid. And I feel like, it, you know, it's some stupid stuff, but, um, you know, going through it, I can see, you know, how it doesn't, you know, provide, uh, even, ha you know, happiness, joy, but then you also can even see it in other people who are, you know, searching for things. And that's, you know, in college now, you see people who are searching for things. They're trying to search for hope or, you know, joy or happiness even for a night. Um, and now, you know, I get, you know, a, a special uh, role of being able, you know, to share with them that, hey, I've gone through that. And that, you know, that life, it doesn't lead to anything. But this life, you know, with Jesus does. And so I think it's special that I do have kind of, you know, a touch of that side and now, um, you know, full, you know, on board um, with Jesus. But I get to uh, relate with people now. Um, and I think that's a super, um, it's super important in college because, there's some lines that get drawn where now, you know, people feel like judgment and they can feel, you know, unworthy. And so I found of a, a lot of ways that I've been able to be relatable because of, you know, my past um, and connecting with, uh, you know, my teammates or with, uh, you know, even classmates, you know, which is, is super cool. Um, and I wouldn't have really had the opportunity without that, um, you know, past that I was talking about. But now I'd say keeping that high day to day, I think is just getting into the word because literally reading the word, um, brings so much awe. Like you can't, you can't sit at the foot of the cross and not be in awe and you can't be, not be in reverent of what, um, you know, Jesus has done. And so I'd say for me, 
you know, every morning in the word that brings that same high that the summer camps did or even their youth nights that I used to have, you know, that's a daily thing now, which is awesome. And I was also being, you know, salt and light on a team, right? With soccer and school and all that. Being able to, of course, you want to make friends with everybody, right? Like the team way at work and camaraderie and synergy is so important on a team. How do you kind of walk through that in terms of, you know, bringing religion or faith into that? Especially because it's like, hey, check this off at the door, like in the locker room. I don't want to hear about your Jesus, God stuff. We're just here to play soccer, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a great question. Um, it definitely can be tough. Um, I wouldn't say so much with the soccer aspect, but definitely school. There feels like there's this just, there's no tolerance for, you know, there's a tolerance for a lot of stuff, but once, you know, Christianity or Jesus gets brought up, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, it puts people on their, you know, toes or, you know, they become a little ruffled by it. Um, but I would say with my team, um, there are a lot of opportunities to talk about the gospel that's not an in-your-face way. Um, and we have, uh, you know, young adult nights um, through the church out there um, in Albuquerque that uh, a few of my teammates, you know, we invite the team to. And again, it's not an in-your-face, like you need to come. But, you know, I think just the aspect of welcoming, welcoming people um, and ultimately just loving them is our way of showing, you know, Jesus in my way you know, of showing Jesus is, you know, even if it's asking, um, you know, how someone's doing and just being there for them or, you know, just, you know, talking about, um, you know, what God's been doing in my life. Um, or again, a simple invite is, is the way to, to get out, um, the gospel without again, getting in people's faces and allowing them to sit in that and, and know that they have someone to come to, um, or a place to go if they want to, but not feeling like the pressure that like they have to, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure, you know, there's this stigma and stereotype of like Christians are so judgmental. Mm -hmm. They're going to judge me for my lifestyle for what I do, you know, what I don't do. And kind of on that same note, is there, for example, an experience or a moment you've had with personally with one of your teammates that you can share about it? Like, hey, like, I just had a really good moment with them. Like, it, I just feel like there was a breakthrough of some sorts. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, I would say when I was younger, I got, uh, called like the judgy Christian. And so that, um, that definitely was hard because it, judge, judge, uh, judgment, sorry, judgment is, you know, the opposite of what, you know, Jesus brought. He, he will bring a day of judgment. We know, but you know, he has grace and truth. And so that was always a difficult thing for me. Um, so I think when I grew up and especially into college, like that's what I, I didn't want, I didn't want people to think they couldn't come to me or couldn't come to church because they're not good enough or they had to fix up to come, you know, ultimately after Jesus, you know, enters the scene, um, there will be a transformed life following that, but to come to the table, you don't need to clean up. And so again, I think that was my, you know, message I wanted to share with people. Um, and there definitely was one, um, we, uh, a, a girl on my team, we got injured at the same time, both went through, um, an ACL injury, uh, actually a day after each other. And so we weren't initially close, obviously we we're teammates, um, you know, cordial, but definitely not close. And, and when this happened, I just felt like God like told me like, this is the opportunity, like, you know, to, and, and she had gone through some other things as well besides the injury. And so I was like, this is a chance for me to show her, you know, that even in this circumstance that is so undesirable, I mean, it's painful physically, mentally, emotionally, um, but to show her that, you know, like circumstances can't steal my joy because my joy, you know, comes from Jesus. And so, um, I mean, this girl, I mean, we got so close so quickly. You're going through rehab together. Um, you're, um, going through training, extra strength training, um, all the treatments and everything, um, to get back. And it just gave me such an awesome, uh, you know, opportunity to, to talk with her, um, and to talk about that had been my second ACL. So I got to, you know, talk to her about how my first one went, um, and how I saw God move through that injury. Um, and then again, just like, you know, the reason I would even, you know, consider coming back from a second ACL is because of God and, and the, 
you know, prov- uh, promises and providence that he's had in my life. And so, um, me and that girl are best friends today. Mm-hmm. Um, but she dove into church after, you know, through that time. Um, and it was really cool to see her, you know, faith start to grow through again, you know, a, a horrible, uh, uh, injury. And, um, so I think that that's definitely one thing that, um, you know, God has done in college that I'm like that injury and us having it a day after each other, you know, it was no accident. Like that was totally God's, you know, setting it up to, you know, move in her life and move in mine as well. So what a way to be able to, I mean, in a way, evangelize to your teammate, right? And impact her. Yeah. Speaking of impact, tell me a little bit more about the backstory of Reverend Awe Designs. Like, where did that story come from? Talk about that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, so from the beginning, so I've done calligraphy, which is uh, hand lettering. Um, so cursive, basically. Um since I can remember, you know, since I was young, it became a hobby and, and definitely like a God given talent. Um, and so, um, originally I just would do, um, you know, signs. I did it for both of my sister's weddings. Um, you know, some wedding signs, you know, even events, you know, like their, their baby showers, uh, and their bridal showers. Um, and then, you know, just some like giftings and stuff like that. Um, but that's how it started. And so in February of last year, so of 2023, um, I had put together just a little like Wix site website uh, just to kind of store all of my calligraphy um, stuff and have like an option for just, you know, selling if people wanted something. Um, and so that was just, you know, for fun, the thing wasn't really like business oriented. It was more just a kind of like a portfolio in a way. And so um, my parents came back from that and were like, whoa, wait, what if we like take this and actually turn it into a business? And, you know, and then the idea, you know, sparked of doing like Christian T-shirts with, you know, with, you know, verses in Christian um you know, sayings on them. And so that was, you know, March, 2023 that they said that. And then by April, you know, they were looking into getting the the website domain and stuff. And so that's when it really started. And so once I, that idea kind of sparked of like, oh, wow, this is going to be like a real, you know, business. That's, you know, when we started thinking about like, oh, what do we want the names to be and stuff. And so the main vision behind, uh, Reverend Odd Designs was like, this is going to be our mission field. And so um, our like kind of little mission statement um, is in awe of Jesus on mission to spread it. And so um, I'd mentioned before the idea of being in awe of Jesus, like you can't, you know, you're sitting at his like feet, you have nothing but reverence and awe. And so um, that's what, really what it is. Like this is the mission field to share, you know, the gospel in a way that God has like you know, given me a talent to do so. And so, um, you know, we had gone through a bunch of names and we obviously landed on Reverend Awe um, Designs. Um, And then going from there, I mean, I didn't realize how hard it was to start a business. You know, it seemed simpler than um, what we all thought. And I actually um, do work alongside my parents and we actually just added on both my sisters uh, for accounting and marketing. Mm both uh, degrees that they got. And so again, it's like, so God inspired that all these pieces have come to work together and, and being a family business is like so awesome again as well. Um, but yeah, we all were kind of stunned at how much work and, and to this day, you know, it's still building, still growing. Um, still trying to get the name out there even, uh, it's only been a few months, but It's, you know, a work in progress, definitely. Um, But just the inspiration from God, it's it's more than a business now. It's it's brought so much even growth in faith the past few months. Um, I've even seen myself like, you know, memorizing verses that I have been like sketching for designs, you know, that again, I wouldn't have memorized if it weren't for it being a design. And so it's just really cool to see again, God use it in a way that I couldn't even have imagined, you know, it's again, bigger than the business. It really is like the mission field to share, you know, the love of Jesus and share what he's done in our lives. So Wow, that's amazing. And to be able to do it, like I said, alongside your family as well, make it a family affair. Mm-hmm. What's it been like? I mean, of course, I know some family business be like, man, this is tough. This is hard. Can I get on my nerves a little bit? Like, I need some space from you. Mm-hmm. What's that been like for you to be able to work through that with your own family? Yeah, it's been, um, that's been good, that aspect of it. Um, it We all are very busy um, and everyone, um, not me, but 
my two sisters and parents both have jobs alongside the business. And then, you know, I'm still in school and stuff. So we all have a lot going on. So in that aspect, that's been hard just because um, it's felt like, guys, we need more movement. You know, we need more, you know, work on Reverend Awe. Um, but then there's also a, just a level of grace of like, just sitting in, you know, patience, like waiting on God's timing as well. Like we've had moments of like, you know, rushes of work and getting a lot done. Um, but then we've had this, you know, kind of rest time as well. And so it's been cool to see like that just business, um, kind of highs and lows, um, in a way. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, we made a whole, um, you know, set of kind of parameters for our business and all of them, you know, attest to what the Bible says about, you know, unity. And, uh, you know, if there is a conflict that we go immediately to peacemaking and, and, and forgiveness. So I would say I, I don't have any concerns with that being a problem. You know, tension. I know there's family tension or irritability or something like that. Um, but in terms of like this being like sustainable and, you know, not having any conflicts, like I have no concerns about that. And again, because I, um, you know, I trust that, you know, everyone is intent on it being the mission field and, and the foundation is on, you know, Jesus and the provision from God. So yeah, I, I feel good about all that. Follow-up question to that would be, where do you kind of see this going in the future? I mean, five years from now, 10 years from now, are you going to switch more so with your majoring, with what you're doing in school, right? Architecture, calligraphy, like what's what's the move for Courtney? What's she going to do? Yeah, so um, the big dream is that Reverend Awe Designs would turn into like Reverend Awe Interior Designs. So it would turn into, a, you know, like an interior architecture, interior design firm um, or company. And so... Um, again, yeah, that's the, the big vision for it. And I would say that we would no longer sell t-shirts then, <laughs> but I mean, I, I would keep that as like a little side thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, the big vision. And so, you know, I have a year, um, well, I'm finishing out this semester and then I have a year left of school. Um, and so that I was hoping that it kind of picks up by then to where we get like a name out there um, so that when I want to, you know, transition into that, there would be some, you know, like foundation of an audience. Um, but we've also, you know, talked about like maybe this, like honestly, the business itself, um, you know, in terms of kind of profit or just business in itself has not, um, taken off as much as we would have hoped. Um, but we've also sat back and been like, Hey, if this just turns into even a blog site to talk about what Jesus is doing, like that is enough for us. Because again, if our mission statement is just to spread, um, the mission of Jesus, then that has nothing to do with money. And so, um, you know, there are big goals, which is good to have, um, and again, they, you know, feel like God inspired goals. Um, but again, if it just turns into, you know, a filter of, you know, sharing the gospel, then that's, you know, where it goes as well. So, well, that's super interesting, super cool about your whole entire business, the future entrepreneurship, whatnot. Final question I have for you kind of to bring it all full circle in a way. Tell me about what the hardest part about being a Christian is for you. Yeah, that's also a great question. Um, I actually had a few answers for that. Um, one side, I would just say in our culture, it's just hard being a Christian. I mean, we're told, you know, in the Bible that uh, the world hates Jesus and us following Jesus, the world's going to hate us too. So um, that's definitely hard. And again, I think part of the car uh, compartmentalizing that happened, um, you know, like in high school and stuff is that that tension of like, no, I'm one way, but, but like this, the, you know, the world, like kind of that one um, foot in one foot out, um, you know, uh, kind of theory, but you can't do that as a Christian. Like you're either all for Jesus or you're not. And so I would say that's definitely, um, it, it can be hard because you have to choose to go against the world and that can bring on, um, tension that can bring on judgment that can bring on even hate, you know, um, persecution in other places, you know, we're fortunate to be in the U S where, you know, reading the Bible is, you know, you're free to do that, um, and free to practice Christianity. But, um, you know, that is definitely hard. And I would just say the other one, um, is the overriding idea of just trust. And, and I think trusting in, um, 
hard times and, and trusting that those hard times are really used for God's good and his glory and, and being able to, um, just again, say that, that God is still with me, that, that this isn't, you know, that, that God is in control of what's happening, um, ultimately. And so I know that in times, you know, that things have gone a different way or, you know, that injury happens or, you know, that phone call comes in um, and it feels like your world is falling and, and it's hard to be like, you know, oh, this is good. And it's it's not necessarily good, but we know that it's for God's good and, and he uses it for good. Um, and so, yeah, again, there's a lot of tension in that of like, man, how could God let this happen? Um, but you know, we have a, a whole book that tells us to trust it and then a whole book of God's faithfulness in it. And so, um, that definitely, you know, throughout the years has not necessarily gotten easier, but that's what you turn to immediately is those, you know, faithfulness, even when it's hard to, um, but yeah, as a Christian, yeah, that, that can be tough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you can probably speak to what you've lost, potentially friendships, relationships, whatnot, over, you know, faith. But, you know, fear not, for I've conquered the world. It's like you're going to face many adversities, many difficult challenges and roadblocks. But, you know, death itself could not be, con- you know, death, death itself, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. amazing in that. It's great. Well, Ms. Courtney, that's all I have for questions. Thank you again so much for coming on the show. Now, the time is yours to plug away on the business. So go for it. Floor is yours. Perfect. Yeah. So I actually have our business card right here, but just has our website, which you can go to, which is www.reverendaw.com. Um, and if you want to go directly to the shop page, just add a little slash shop on there, um, as well as our email, which is info at reverendaw.com. Um, if you have any, um, you know, questions or maybe a design idea, you can uh, shoot us an email there. Um, and all of our social medias are at Reverend Awe Designs. That's Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so definitely uh, check us out there. Um, and again, yeah, check out the website, um, hit up the blog pages, look at what God's been doing in our life, um, as well as um, we have a little subscription box that you can get, um, you know, info, um, and become a part of the subscription list. Um, and again, yeah, email us with prayer requests, um, pray, you know, daily over Reverend Awe. And so, yeah, we'd love to see you check it out and, and become part of the little Reverend Awe fam. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. It's growing guys. Small, but mighty, right? Yes, Small, but exactly, mighty. Exactly. We're yes. growing. If you haven't already guys, check out our stuff, all good things. I mean, look at this merch. It's cool. It's awesome. Everybody loves it, right? All the cool yeah. kids are wearing it. Yeah. All everyone, the cool kids. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. About it. Yes. So I will have all that in the description for this show episode so you can follow along, check out her stuff. And if you have not already subscribed to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, drop us a follow, check us out on Spotify, Amazon Music, or on everything. And of course, her stuff. It's all stuff. Until next time, Ms. Courtney, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. We'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.